Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Alex the Trucking Guy. Today I'm going to be working on my air brakes and my in cab inspection. So you get in the truck, as soon as your butt hits the seat, you're going to put on your seatbelt. At this point, the instructor is going to give you instructions. Instructions are done. You're going to tell the instructor. I'm going to go ahead and start off with my air brakes. The first thing you're going to check out, you're going to have an eagle eye. You're going to read your primary air gauge. It reads 0, 25, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 100, 125, and 150. Okay, when, what you're going to notice when once you get into the DMV, you're going to look at where your needle's at on your primary air gauge. All of your readings are going to be done off the primary air gauge. Right now it's at about 120. You want to lower it with the truck turned off to about 90, uh, under 100. Sign your brake. Now it's at 90. Now you'll tell them, I'm going to go ahead and charge my vehicle. Clutch in. Turn your key on and let your needle settle. Once they're settled, go ahead and turn on your vehicle. Right here, what you want to do, you want to charge up your truck. Once you hear your governor cut out, psst, that means your truck's fully charged. At this point, you can rev your engine. So you can accelerate it, no more than 12 RPM. That way you have full control of that time. If you have that 12 RPM, your primary air gauge is charging up. Around this time, you're gonna have a moment of silence at the DMV. You're probably gonna be nervous, but it's okay. Just relax, take a deep breath, and stay focused on, on your primary air gauge. Once you're around 120, stop accelerating it. That was my governor, you're not gonna say that though. You're gonna say my truck is fully charged and you're gonna give me the first reading. My truck's fully charged and my needle is at 130. You can go ahead and put it in first gear. If it doesn't go in, clutch it again, put it in first gear. Go ahead and turn off your truck. Now you can do a safe start and turn your key on just on auxiliary mode. You're going to indicate my ABS light is in good working condition. It turned on and off. Now you're going to push your brake knobs in. Once you stop hearing that hissing sound, your needle settled at 120 PSI. Now you're going to push your service brake and you're going to hold it. Now my needle settled at 110 PSI. My one minute starts now. At the DMV you can count the whole minute with your watch or a stopwatch. Do not use your cell phone anymore. Okay, my minute is up. My needle still at 110 PSI. This is a good test because I didn't lose more than 4 PSI in one minute. You'll ask the examiner, can I let go of the brake? They'll say yes. Now I'm going to do my low warning test. Go ahead and fan your brake. Control the needle as it's going down. My light and buzzer turned on at 65 PSI. This is a good test because they turned on no lower than 55 PSI. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to my spring pop-out test. Find the brakes, you control the needle.
brakes popped out at 24 psi this is a good test because they popped out between 45 and 20 psi now at this time you have an option you can turn on your truck and char fully charge it and do your tuck test or you can turn on your truck and once your truck is on you can start your in-cab inspection here I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna start off my, ins my in-cab inspection right away put it in neutral don't forget okay first I'm gonna go ahead and start with my mirrors my mirrors are in good working condition they're not cracked, chipped, or broken. There's no illegal stickers and they have the proper distance. From right here I have my door. My door opens and closes correctly. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. There's no illegal welding. It's not damaged or missing. Properly mounted and secured. No missing hardware. From right here I'm going to go ahead and go to my windows. My windows are in good working condition. They go up and down correctly. They're not cracked, chipped, or broken. There's no illegal stickers, properly mounted and secured, and no missing hardware. From here, I'm gonna go to my windshield. My windshield's in good working condition. It's not cracked, chipped, or broken. There's no illegal stickers, it's properly mounted and secured, no missing hardware. Now I'll talk about my rubber seals from my windshield and my door. They're not ripped, torn, or frayed. They're in good working condition. They're properly mounted and secured, no missing hardware. Then I'll go to my windshield wipers. My windshield wipers are in good working condition. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. There's no illegal welds, properly mounted and secured, no missing hardware. Then I'll go to my windshield wiper blades. They're not ripped, torn, or frayed. They're properly mounted and secured, no missing hardware. From here, you go to your window washer fluid. That's not damaged or missing, so you'll just push it. Sometimes they'll make you do it, sometimes they won't. Okay, from right there, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my highway horn. That's in good working condition. It's not damaged or missing. City horn, so you won't forget. That's in good working condition. It's not damaged or missing. Then you'll go to your lights. You'll go ahead and turn them on. They're in good working condition. They're not damaged or missing. Then you go to your high beams. A blue light will turn on on the dashboard. They're not damaged or missing. From right here, you go straight into your left turning signal. That's not damaged or missing. Right turning signal. That's not damaged or missing. That's in good working condition. From right here, you go to your four-way flashers. They're in good working condition. They're not damaged or missing. Boom. Then I'll go to my steering wheel. There's no more than two inches of the play. Good working condition. Not cracked, bent, or broken properly mounted and secured no missing hardware from right here I'm gonna go ahead and go to my oil gauge my oil gauge reads 0 to 100 my needle is not cracked chipped or broken and the operating range is between 25 and 50 and 75 psi once again the operating range is between 25 and 75 psi now I gotta go to my water gauge it reads 0 to 250 my needle is not cracked, chipped, or broken. The operating range is between 175 to 195. And from right here, I go to my battery bolt. Right now, it's reading 14.0. That's in good working condition. And the operating range is between 13.5 and 15. From right here, I'm going to go ahead and go to my def tank. My def tank reads empty to full. And right now, it's fully charged. Then I'll go to my primary and secondary gauge. It reads 0 to 150. My needle is not cracked, chipped, or broken. And the operating range is between 100 and 120 PSI. Okay, from right there, I'm going to go to my knobs. They're fully engaged. They're not cracked, chipped, or broken. They're not leaking any air. Properly mounted and secured. And there ain't no missing hardware. From right here, I'm going go to go to my heater. So this is the important part. Make sure this white thing is on the red. Boom. You turn it on and you put it on one of these two right here. My heater is in good working condition. Then you go to your defroster. Keep this the same way. But make sure this goes here. And you end the 
navigate this, my defroster is in good working condition. Okay, from there, we'll go ahead and go to my boot. My boot is now ripped, torn or frayed, properly mounted and secured. There's no missing hardware. Then from right there, I'll go ahead and go to my stick. Good working condition, not crack bent or broken, no illegal welding, properly mounted and secured, no missing hardware. Now I got my shifter, goes up and down correctly, it's not damaged or leaking. <laughs> then I'll go to my acceler accelerator, good working condition, not crack bent or broken, there's no illegal welds, there's no debris or any bottles that'll prevent me from accelerating. Now I'll go to my brake, in good working condition, it's not crack bent or broken, no illegal welds, there's no bottles or debris that'll prevent me from breaking. Now I'll go to my clutch, clutch, there's no more than one inch of play, it's not crack bent or broken, there's no illegal welds, and there's no bottles or debris that'll prevent me from breaking. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and go to my emergency equipment. First, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my belt. My belt's not ripped, torn, or frayed. It latches and unlatches correctly. Now I got my seat properly mounted and secured. Good working condition. There's no missing hardware and it's adjusted to me. From right here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my reflective triangles. My reflective triangles are in good working condition. They're not crack bent or broken. They're amber in color and they're inside the box. Now I got my fire extinguisher. My fire extinguisher is up to date. It's rated for this truck. It's properly mounted and secured. There's no missing hardware and the cotter pin is not damaged or missing. Now I'll go to the fuse box. My fuse box will be right there. My fuse box is in good working condition. It's not cracked, bent or broken. If an emergency is to occur, the, the lights will come on automatically. Therefore, I'm not required to carry any extra fuses. So now that I concluded that, I'm going to go ahead and start my tug test because my truck's fully charged. So from here, I'll go ahead and put it in first gear. If it doesn't go in, clutch again, and it goes in. So now, I'm going to go ahead and check my truck brakes, and I'm going to go ahead and push in my, my trailer brakes. Boom. Now that they're in, this is all, all you want to do feel the truck move a little bit so let go of the clutch slowly but don't let it go all the way right about there my truck brakes are good because my vehicle didn't move you pull this one out now you can check your trailer brakes push this one in same thing trailer brakes are good because my truck didn't move. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and check my service brakes. So you'll push both of them in. And you'll go up about five feet or about three to five miles an hour. Once you go up, remember, let go of the clutch slowly. Get the clutch in first and then the brake. Once you come to a stop, my service brakes are good because I came to a complete stop. My truck didn't lean left or lean right. There's no indication of suspensions or brake problems. Put it in neutral. Pull your brakes. And you'll say this concludes my air brakes and my in-cab inspection. Then from there, the examiner will give you some feedback. If you pass, that's awesome. You can do section A, B, or C. And remember that every section has the coupling system, okay? So, guys, this concludes my air brakes and my in-cab inspection. Hopefully you liked this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Work with other people and remember that the air brakes is the most important thing in this course or any course in the nation. Okay? Now, I will be doing one-on-ones and working on new content. Those one-on-ones would be ideally for, truck for truckers that, that are seasoned or truckers who are new into the game. And I'll be talking about certain tools that I believe every trucker should have. If there's any content or anything that you guys want me to work on, please comment downstairs. Let me know. 
I'm here to help you guys out and help out myself as well and help out other students that are watching this video. If you're a seasoned driver, let me know if there's something that you want me to talk about and we'll go from there, okay? Peace.